Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this short message, I'd like to share with you some pointers about the role of the Quran in the life of a new Muslim, someone who just reverted to Islam and is considering or trying to figure out the path. In the very beginning, you know, because Islam is such an ocean of knowledge and the Quran itself is such an ocean of knowledge, it can actually be pretty intimidating and just to even think about where to begin. So the first bit of advice I'd like to give you is as far as learning and understanding the Quran is concerned, take it very little at a time. Don't rush yourself, don't push yourself into, and don't stress yourself out that you don't know everything yet, or you don't know how to recite it properly yet, or you haven't understood all of it yet, it's okay. The Quran and our relationship with it is all about quality, and it's not really about quantity. The second thing is, you know, immediately because as you become Muslim, you feel the pressure to want to pray exactly the same way that all the other Muslims pray in Arabic, and that's quite a long journey. You should take your time and memorize the surahs, even if it takes you months to do it, it's fine. It's okay for you to, you know, take a little bit, little bit, little bit at a time as far as memorization is concerned. And a question might even arise, why do I have to pray in Arabic? Why don't I have to, why can't I just pray in English or Spanish or whatever other language? Well, you certainly can, but we believe that the Quran is the literal word of Allah. That it's literally, doesn't matter what ethnicity or background you come from, I myself are, uh, am not Arab, and actually the majority of people in the world aren't Arab. But we consider the language of the Qur'an sacred, because it's directly from Allah and that's part of its purity. And so we give it importance. And so even if it takes you time, do try to memorize the first surah, memorize some of the short surahs towards the end, and inshallah you'll uh, you know, figure out a way to understand them better. Finally, in this short message, what I want to share with you is, in studying the Qur'an or reading even a little bit about the meanings of the Qur'an or listening to the explanation of the Qur'an in translation, uh, just keeping that going a little bit at a time also and continuously is very important not just for new Muslims but actually for every Muslim because it's our spiritual lifeblood. You know, you're going to be praying with it and you're going to be reading it, in, you know, eventually in a pretty short time if Allah wills, even in the Arabic language. But until that happens, and even after that happens, you should be continuously trying to understand it in the English language. Just a little bit at a time, it'll give you a spiritual boost and even open up your mind to things and expand the, the, you know, the wisdom of Allah onto you uh, in ways that you didn't expect. So I pray that you're able to do that and, and sustain a healthy relationship and a continuously growing relationship with the Qur'an in your life and congratulations on your Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this short message, I'd like to share with you some tips on trying to understand the Quran better. Uh, obviously, the Quran is unlike any other book you've probably ever read before. Uh, when you read it, you realize that it's not in chronological order, it's not in subject order, it repeats itself quite a bit. Uh, there are also these unexpected transitions, especially if you're reading in translation. It goes from one subject to another to another, and you, it might leave you wondering what's going on. Not to mention there are ayat, there are verses or statements in the Qur'an that if you don't understand some context behind them, and you just read them at face value, it might leave you pretty confused. So... Keeping all of that in mind, this short message is about two things. I want to you know, I want to point you to two resources that can help bridge that gap, and it can in your own studies of the Quran, at least for in the beginning, really help you navigate the text in an easy way and help you understand some of these what seem like abrupt transition transitions. So the first resource I want to point you to is uh, a, a person I consider a teacher, even a mentor uh, in the work that he's done. It's Professor M A S Abdul Halim. And he's written a, a translation of the Qur'an that's published by Oxford University Press. Uh, it's a brilliant translation. It captures the overall meaning of the ayah. And it's not a word-for-word -word translation, but it's actually still a very good literary work. And an easy read at that would... Uh, and if you get a copy, the one that has footnotes in it, it'll really, really help you. So that's the first resource. The second resource is my own project. Uh, it's called Bayina.tv. And if you go to that website and sign up, you can get a gift subscription also. Um... It has a series called Cover to Cover, where I've actually explained the Qur'an in brief from one end to the other. And I don't expect you to go through the entire hundreds of hours of video, you know, overnight or over a month or even over a year. The point of that was you study a little bit of the Qur'an and you need some, you know, somewhat of a, uh, an explanation or maybe a walkthrough of what what's going on in this chapter or what's going on on this page. Well, there's a resource for you that discusses it in easy English. So that's the point of that. So between these two resources, I think you can have a pretty healthy, growing relationship 
with the Qur'an and building a solid understanding. And inshallah, after that grows and you cross certain milestones within these two resources, then there are other more advanced resources that, that'll just open up to you anyway. Thank you so very much for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the short message, I'd like to share with you a very brief story uh, of uh, something that happened while I was in London. I was visiting London recently. I gave a lecture about the Quran and a young lady came up to me and told me that she's been looking into Islam. She's been watching a lot of my videos and other resources. And, you know, she, she wants to accept it, but she's not sure about it. And I asked her, well, what is, what is keeping you? Why aren't you sure? And she said, I don't know. And I said, well, no, I'd, I'd like you to think about it and give me a clear answer. What exactly is holding you back? And she thought about it for a few seconds. And then she told me it's maybe how her parents are going to receive the news, how her friends are going to be shocked, how, you know, it's going to be a lot of change in life. It's going to be hard. And I heard all of those things and I told her, uh, you know, it's all in fact going to be hard and it's not going to be easy. And all of those are legitimate concerns. Your parents are probably going to really not take this well. Your friends are probably going to be pretty shocked. You're also probably going to feel very, very isolated. And life is going to change in the beginning at least, not for the better, but for the worse in many, many ways. It, it, this is all true, and these are all legitimate, legitimate concerns. But I told her, this one thing I can offer you. The peace that you are going to feel in your heart the tranquility that you are going to experience, that you have never, ever experienced, ever before. You know, all of our relationships that, that exist with other people, on the one end, and the first time you build a real bond with the one who created you, and the one who's been taking care of you more than anyone else, all along, you actually directly connect yourself to him. The peace you will experience, let me tell you, all the price you're going to pay is worth it. And as I said that to her, she started tearing. She just started crying. And I asked her, you know, you know why you're crying? And she says, no, I don't know why I'm crying. And I said, because you're saying you're not sure about Islam, but you've actually already accepted it. The Islam, Islam is actually accepted in a person's heart. And when the heart accepts Islam, the tears come out. It just, they just come out. You can't even help it. She starts crying even more. And I said, you know, when you cry, you remind me of something Allah said in the Quran. And I recited this ayah to her. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ When the time came that they heard what was revealed to the messenger, تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيلُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ You're going to see their eyes overflow with tears. مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ As a result of what they recognize out of the truth. In other words, they hear the revelation, they recognize it to be true, and they just can't even help themselves. يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا they say, Master, we've come to accept. We have believed. Please write us in, record us among those who bear witness. In other words, among those who bear witness to the truth. So I share a piece of this ayah with her, a little bit of the Qur'an. She starts crying even more. And then she says, how do I take shahada? And she did, right then and there. Just last week, I was in Milwaukee. I met another young man. He told me, uh, you know, he works at a bar and he's been, in his free time, he's been watching Qur'an videos, and he's been watching a lot of my stuff, and, you know, his friend became Muslim, and he's been thinking about it, but he's not sure. And he's, I sat him down too, and I said, you know, well, you're already praying five times a day, because he was. You're already attending the prayers. You're already reciting the Qur'an. You're already, you've, he already knew how to say the shahada. He had memorized it already. But he just wanted a little bit of an encouragement to, you know, just come in. You know, but that, that moment when you take the shahada, for those of you that have, you know the kind of peace you felt. You can't even describe it to anybody else. It is something between, that joy is something like a secret between you and Allah. But from that point on, challenges come. You know, but whether they come from family or they come from friends or they come from the job or they come from your social circle, they will come. They might be, you know, emotional in nature. They might even be financial in nature. There might be some serious, serious challenges that come your way, but that is Allah's way of testing whether or not this statement, this declaration you made is worth it to you. What are you willing to pay for it? What are you willing to suffer to hold on to this? Because He wants to know the value of those words to you. These aren't just words you say and get a walk away. You, these are words you say and you prove their worth to Allah. And then when you can go through a little bit of that test, 
you will see Allah open the doors of tranquility and ease and peace in your heart like you never, ever, ever imagined before. You know, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ In Surah Al-Ankabut, the 29th Surah, Allah says, Did people assume that they're going to just accept the faith? And they're not going to be put to serious test? You know, yuftanun, the word used for they're not, did they assume they're not going to be tested? So the Arabic word for tested, actually, the one chosen in Arabic is for uh, when gold is put under high temperatures so that its impurities come out. It's like Allah is comparing you to gold. In other words, Allah is saying you're valuable. And when gold is refined, you can't just scrub it and wash it. You have to put it under intense heat. Because it's a valuable metal, it's so dense that its, in, that its impurities are so deeply embedded inside it, it takes time and a lot of heat to get it out. So when you're in the hot seat, when you're going through a tough time because of your Islam, it is because Allah considers you gold. And these tough times are going to refine you and purify you and make you a, a better believer than you ever imagined. So this is part of the journey to Allah. Accept it, embrace it, and you know, feel happy about it. And as you go in this journey and feel kind of lost and alone, just understand This is the last thing I'll share with you. Those who believe and accept, you know, those who've accepted the faith and did good deeds thereafter, then Allah says about them, we will enter them. Absolutely, this is my promise. I, I, we will certainly enter them into the company of the righteous. In other words, you're going to lose some friends, you're going to lose some relationships, some things will not be the same as they used to be before, but Allah will replace them with new relationships, with new bonds of love, with new bonds of brotherhood and sisterhood that you could not have imagined, and the sincerity and the love you will feel will more than compensate for the losses you felt at one point. You know, and Allah will soften your heart and others' hearts towards you just because of the beauty of this faith. I pray Allah gives you more and more strength as you progress in this journey. Thank you so much for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.